What's up, you guys? Welcome to my workout. Today is February 26, 2024, day 16 of peptide therapy. Um, my ankles and my knees are feeling much better than they were yesterday, but you know, with or without peptides, it's day to day. I want to thank Mer Merrick Health for um, sponsoring my treatments and helping me as I go along with this. Um, but yeah, just letting you know, no big changes yet but gut health continues to be really good. Okay, um, while I'm on the peptides, I'm trying to let my body heal. So I'm choosing exercises that allow me through leverage to get the heaviest effect into my body and the most global or full body effect that I can get without um, putting too much actual um, weight bearing stress on my system right now. So um, I have a saying that in, in, for my type of strength training, I like to practice that bad leverage is good. I'll explain that in a moment. Um, but I'll be doing one of my uh, favorite exercises. I call it the super shovel because it's just a whole bunch of different movements where I've loaded a light barbell um, on one side or asymmetrically like a shovel. And you'll see it in a moment. I, um, and I've never, I'm new to, just to talking about or describing what I'm doing as I'm actually doing it. I've been doing these things a long time, but I've, I'm just trying to put it into words is new to me. So I'll do my best, but please, um, bear with me as I, I try to do this. This one's got a lot of stuff to explain. I'm, I'll, I'm also going to try to make it go as quickly as I can and hopefully as informative as I can. One final thing, this is my actual workout. Um, this is what I would do whether I'm recording it or not. I just wouldn't be talking to like you. So that being the case, this is not, um, I don't recommend anything that I'm doing here. This is not meant as a tutorial or an instructional. I just hope that in sharing with you what I do and why, um, that it can in principle at least be of some help to you. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> hi, Keiki. Hi there, sweetie. I got, uh, okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I call it a shovel lift. Let's start on this side. I'd like to start on this side. This is a six foot long, 15 pound aluminum bar. And as I hold it right now, gravity is, or the energy of this bar is wanting to go downwards. So using my right arm as a fulcrum, I'm fixing or pushing, I'm countering that energy or absorbing that energy into my system right now. Because what the energy of this bar would like to do, if it doesn't do this, if I now lock it down like so, it wants to bend me like this or laterally flex me to the right. So just standing here with a slight bend in both my knees, as I do this, I, can't, I, I pretend the bar is electrified and that no part of it can lean on my thigh nor touch or the bar's gonna wanna start moving side to side later on. Can't let that happen. Okay, so as I'm doing this, I'm having, I'm basically being turned like a dial, okay? It's exerting a type of frontal plane torque on my body. And in this, and this is what's kind of cool about this. Right now, my right arm is a fulcrum to the left. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. See right now, so it is, I'm first gonna start with a shovel deadlift. And the objective throughout this exercise is to keep this bar level and not let it touch my body. So that's what the deadlift looks like. Now I'm gonna do what's called, what I call a shovel curl. So I've got a big heavy shovel full of soil. I want to think of slowly pitching it off to the left. What's important as I do this is I have to scapularly depress on my left side to fix. So as I exert force onto the bar, and it's an interesting kind of curl because I'm using my bicep, but I'm also using my chest in a way 
to adduct and push the bar into this vertical position. Now, let me just back up. This is really important. If, here's what happens when I, especially if we go heavier. Hey, can you cool it? We don't want this to happen. Obviously, you see what's happening. As I'm curling, we don't want a shrug. We don't want a, a, that's leaking energy. I need to seal this system up here. Get double X posture, extended spine, expanded rib cage. And now, as I do this, as I exert force on this bar, I can feel it exerting force back onto me. And that happens throughout this lift, okay? So I'm double X, tall, and I'm making a long lever out of my body as also holding a long lever out to my side. Okay, so as I am bringing this bar to vertical, now here's a cool thing. As I stack this bar vertically outside of me, it's now trying to drive me straight down, but also bend me over to the left. But I'm not gonna let it do that. I've got all the weight of this bar, I'm supporting it mostly on my left leg. All right, from this position here, I'm gonna pretend there's a tool shed to my right. I'm gonna push the bar up, and then I'm gonna try to slide the bar up onto the roof of the tool shed. Once I'm here, I now have to keep this entire bar as level as I can. Then I'm gonna lower the bar. So right now, my right arm is still a fulcrum. My left is pulling down. So my arms are actually fighting against each other, which is a very unique situation for a free weight exercise. And that's another reason why I like this. There's a lot of parts, a lot of things going on here. And then now I still have this frontal torque being applied to me as I settle into a kind of like a shovel front squat. And then once I stand up from there, I'm pushing up and pulling down. So I'm pushing up with my right arm, pulling down with my left the whole time. Up here, this thing's wanting to bend me over to the right, but I'm using my, ant my anti-lateral flexors to counter that. Now it's wanting to jam me down into the left. I'm opening up the right side obliques. Once I'm here, now, I'm gonna slowly lower. So once again, now my left hand is the fulcrum and my right arm is lowering. So when I'm doing the deadlift, the right arm is the fulcrum, but then when I bring it in the shovel curl, the left arm is the fulcrum, okay? As I come up here, the right arm becomes the fulcrum. All right, so it's constantly switching back and forth, but it's getting this challenge into the lateral compartment of the core. I find it's hard to come by that. So, oh, we gotta do the other side. <clears throat> this is gonna be a long, sorry, this is gonna be a long ass video because, um, Sorry, getting a little confused here. Because if, if you're patient, and if I could somehow explain this properly, I think you're gonna get a lot out of this principle because this is something that I don't think shows up a lot in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the gyms and elsewhere. So, okay, once again, I'm also, okay, so going over to the other side. So now the left arm becomes the fulcrum and I'm now sinking the energy of this bar off to the right side. I am using the scapular depressors on the right side. So I'm pushing down. So my arms right now are kind of battling each other. Okay, so I'm pushing this down into my left arm. My left arm is pulling up, which is exerting force into my right. Okay, so on this deadlift, my objective is to sit as deep into this as I can. And because most of the weight of the bar is off to the left, I'm mostly pushing out of the left leg, trying to elevate my left upper chest. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time. 
So here, the objective is not to let this bar till to do anything. I have to keep it. And I also want to avoid letting the bar touch any part of me. I also want to avoid letting the bar push my arm into my thigh, which could happen later. Okay, now from there, so I'm now pushing down. I'm packing down hard on the right side so I can do a shovel curl. And it's not just the biceps. I'm actually having to laterally flex to the right. But because that energy is going into the bar, I'm not actually going to bend off to the right. But I'm still using the right side obliques and other musculature to do that. Now I've got this load off to my right. From here, I've got all my weight on my right leg. I'm going to push the bar straight up. And then I'm going to pretend I'm sliding it onto the roof of a shed or just lowering it like so, holding it level. Now there's a lot of torque or stress that's trying to bend me off to the left. I'm having to counter that on the right side. And now I'm going to pull this down. And right now I'm having to push up with my left arm and pull down with my right to keep the bar level. So there's this interesting push and pull exchange going on between the right, not just the right arm and the right, and the, the right and left arm, but the right side of the body and the left side of the body. Once we get through all of this explanation, this will go a little faster. Okay, but I need to, like, I need to explain what's going on here. So as I load up, because I'm not, as I get heavier, I'm not going to be able to talk. So <clears throat> I'm trying to get everything, all the information out right now. Once again, that's a 15 pound bar, uh, six feet long. It is not heavy as it stands, but because the leverage what it lacks in weight due to the manipulation of the leverage factors, both in the tallness of my posture as well as placing the weight asymmetrically at the very end of a long lever, um, the weight comes in very heavy. And whether I'm on peptides or not, or in trying to heal my body or not, I've always been a big fan of seeing what's the most effect I can get in the most of, in the largest part of my body with the least amount of weight. And I also like to see if I can, if in that exercise I can move that weight a great distance. And this exercise is kind of hard to beat. Okay, so once again, right now I've got a very strong force that's trying to twist me it wants to do this to me it's also trying to bend me it would even like to throw me into the ditch to the right but i'm gonna stack up hard over my right leg i basically i don't really need whatever side the weight is on that hemisphere of the body is where i am stacking everything everything up tall okay i'm gonna get nice and tall in my extended spine expanded rib cage i'm locking down hard on the left side this side is easy. This side is the side that I need to focus on. I have only have added five pounds to the bar, so now this is a 20 pound bar, but that five pounds really shows up. By the way, I have heavier bars, but for this exercise, literally the lighter the bar is, the harder the exercise is. With, okay, now I'm gonna shut up for a moment. My left arm is what I call a hard fulcrum. I'm, I'm kind of just pushing down. Now, I'm not a physics guy. I, all right, I don't, but I'm, I'm trying to use the terms as accurately as I can. But if I screw them up, uh, please help me out in the comments. And you can call me stupid because <sighs> with some of this stuff I am. Okay, so now my right arm is the fulcrum. So I'm pulling down with my left as I'm pushing up with my right. And those two forces together will help to keep the bar 
as level and stable as possible as I enter into the front squat. Whole time. This is all in the core. This is not heavy for my legs, nor is it heavy for my arms, but I'm trying to absorb everything I'm doing and I guess distribute this force by using my legs and my midsection. And because each one of these repetitions takes so long, um, all I do is one. And then I'll save whatever energy I have left for a slightly heavier bar, and I'll do that for a single. Okay. So, ooh, felt the left knee on that one. All right. So once again, I'm pushing down. I'm scapularly depressing or de-shrugging my right side, and I'm pulling slightly pulling up on the left. So I have a, a push down and a pull up. So a nice push pull going across the body. Once again, my weight is all stacked on my left leg, but so I'm tall in the left hemisphere of the body. Try not to let any part of the bar touch me. Also, try not to let the bar push my left arm into my left leg. Once I'm here, I curl across the body. Once again, I am pushing inwards with my right as I'm pushing inwards with my left in opposing fashion. Then I'm pushing straight up which is kind of a unique way to push a weight and then bringing it to level across the body. I'm gonna pull it down. So right now it's constantly wanting to bend me to the left. Squatting hard on my left leg. I'm thinking of elevating my left upper chest. And then using my obliques, you can't see them, but I am actually trying to laterally flex with my right oblique compartment. I'm trying to keep this stacked and well outside the body. So it is a constant challenge to the left core. I'm gonna get up tall. I'm gonna make sure that I've pushed my right arm all the way down. And then I get a nice, long, lowering back to the starting position. Okay. You know, I'm gonna guess that a lot of people, based on the first 60 seconds of this video, probably got bored and bailed. And I totally understand, I probably would too. But if you're still here and you understand what I'm doing here and how valuable the type of the push and pull and all the forces that are, I guess the word is force vectors that are going on here and how one arm becomes the fulcrum in one movement and then the other arm becomes the fulcrum in the other movement, which changes the way or changes the demands on the core. It's, um, I think you're going to get a lot of benefit. You don't have to be good at this. I'm not that good at this, but I found that practicing this makes me better and safer at the things I'm actually kind of good at. So, all right, once again, starting with a deadlift. Objective is not to let the bar push my arms into my legs. I mostly see I'm gonna lift my left heel. So you can see I'm mostly pushing off the right side since the weight is on my right side. 
Now, I'm gonna get tall, I'm gonna make sure the hard, the farther I push the end of the bar down here, now the longer or the worse my leverage is. So this bar now only weighs 25 pounds, but trying to curl, and this is not the direction I normally curl in, so it is weird, and it's finding muscles that normally sleep with regular linear movements. And then now, as this bar comes up and over, it is putting a lot of force outside the right side of my body. So for this, I'm mostly on my right leg. Now, I'm pushing up with my right, pulling down with my left, mostly squatting down on my right leg. extension trying to make lift this through the highest quarter radius as I can stacking it strictly to vertical the grip challenge in the left side is also very unique it's a very axial challenge to the grip which doesn't happen a lot now I'm gonna fully straighten my left elbow so that now when I lower across the leverage once again is really bad and the effect in the body is really good another thing i don't know how long each of these repetitions are taking but another thing uh, for those who don't know, all the exercises that I come up with for myself have to in some way simulate the conditions of combat and or make me and others more resilient to the conditions of combat and as well as that includes being injury resistant. So the amount of time, the time under tension to complete this entire series is very similar to how life treats you. Sometimes in a physical struggle, it doesn't end in a few seconds. It goes on and on and on. And the conditions keep changing. So, even though you're tired, you keep having to deal with something new. But another way of thinking of that is, while you're entering the new challenge, you're also resting from the previous challenge. And that allows you to kind of build the mindset of continuing to work under duress while still while still maintaining some semblance of control so I'm going to lower it here as far as I can and now I'm going to get back into my legs and I want to make this as difficult as I can one way I can make it easier is to let it fall out to to my left, but I'm gonna keep it tight, close, pushing down hard on the right side. And then I'm gonna get up tall, because what it wants to do is this to me, but I'm locking down, stabilizing against that. All right. I know that for most of you, an Olympic barbell might be the only option you have. And um, um, I'll do a separate video on how to do this type of lift with a 45 pound Olympic barbell, but that is not the ideal implement 
with this exercise, less is, is not only more, less is much more. Meaning a light bar like this 15 pound six foot barbell is not gonna counterbalance what's on the end of the bar the way a heavier steel bar uh, would or definitely a Olympic bar. So, okay. I have a 30 pound five foot bar inside that I normally use, um, but that added weight and also the shorter lever of that bar is nowhere near as good as this, this six foot aluminum. All right. Once again, weight is on the right leg and a stack up tall. Here we go. Trying to keep that bar level the whole time. Now, pushing down on the left. By the way, this bar is 25 pounds. My right arm is gonna form a high fulcrum over my head. I'm pushing up with my right, pulling down with my left. Okay. Squatting down mostly on my right leg right now. This is the heaviest 25 pound. exercise that I can do with conventional equipment. Ah, another thing, if you have what you consider an old shitty barbell and a handful of mishmash plates rusting in a closet or garage somewhere, and you think it's too light to get any benefit from, do this. You'll never look at that, that crappy bar with mismatched plates. Again, this is the best thing you can do. Especially, I know tons of people have rusty barbells with 110 and 15 and maybe a 25 pound but they can't load the bar evenly and they're about ready to throw that bar away, don't. Do this. It's another beautiful thing about this. It takes what was normally considered garbage and turns it into gold. So this is probably my last rep. I brought out more plates, but I keep my workout short. I'm struggling on this, so I don't want to struggle too long because oh, I gotta come back tomorrow. Okay. All right, see, it wants to shove the bar into my leg and also wants to do this to me. So I have to de shrug or scapularly depress my right side, and then I'm gonna have to harden my core to keep this thing from leaning on me. All right. Most of my weight is on my left. See how my left knee likes this. I'm trying to get my left forearm to not touch the outside of my leg. Pushing hard with my left leg. Ooh. Okay. Pushing down hard with the right side. Okay, now I gotta rest. And then pushing up, left arm becomes the fulcrum as I eccentrically lengthen out my right arm, pulling down hard with my right arm as I'm pushing up hard with my left. 
now maintaining that my right side lateral core is locking down hard as well as my lats <sighs> Stack it vertical, and then bring it down once I'm getting a, an axial challenge to the right hand grip. I'm going to lower my right arm to the elbow straight that way. Now when I lower across the body, I have the worst leverage possible, and that's good. And get up tall. All right. Oh, fuck. All right. Okay. So if you're still here for all of that, in my opinion, well, number one, I'm very, very grateful to you as a fellow human being for taking the time to listen. And I truly hope that you understand some of the principles and the benefits of, of what I'm doing here with this. But thank you. You're very, in my opinion, you are elite if you watched this whole thing or even part of it. So thank you very much. What do you want? What do you want? And uh, much aloha to you. Bye.